dear audience, I would like to present our laboratory to you. The focus of our research is uh, the secondary processes, injury processes after uh, stroke. Stroke is a debilitating disease state. Uh, it is caused by the blockade of one of the main arteries supplying the brain with blood. But besides this primary injury, there are other processes which uh, accelerate the progression of the damage. We use animal models of stroke in our research and the specific secondary injury process we investigate is called spreading depolarization. It is a wave of uh, depolarization that propagates across the cortex uh, at a very slow rate, 2 to th uh, 6 millimeter per minute. And uh, this can be initiated spontaneously in the ischemic brain and it causes damage. Uh, in this uh, uh, disease, stroke, we all know that stroke affects mostly the old people. So we are interested in the impact of aging on spreading depolarization on the secondary processes in uh, uh, stroke-related injury. We have a unique uh, tool in our laboratory, which is uh, an imaging tool. And this tool was uh, developed by us, uh, therefore it is unique uh, all over the world. We can visualize changes in membrane potential in the cortex of the rat by using a fluorescent uh, dye. And with the help of this dye, we can visualize the propagation of spreading depolarization waves through a closed cranial window created above the parietal cortex of the rat. This uh, imaging system uh, can look at membrane potential changes, but also uh, changes in uh, blood flow. For this, we use laser speckle contrast analysis, and the blurring of the speckle contrast correlates with uh, the perfusion, blood perfusion. We can also look at uh, the volume of blood in, in the brain by illuminating the surface with green light. Green light is absorbed by blood, so if we have a low uh, reflected light in intensity, it means that we have high blood volume in the area investigated. And finally, we can look at uh, uh, hemoglobin saturation by imaging. Uh, for that, we have to illuminate the surface with red light, and the intensity of the reflected light correlates with the ratio of the deoxygenated hemoglobin in the tissue. These are pictures, I don't know how well you can see them, uh, that we can acquire with the use of this technology. Up here you can see the signal uh, of the voltage sensitive dye as a spreading depolarization wave crosses the cortex. Uh, below uh, the signal of uh, blood flow can be seen and the warmer colors indicate higher flow uh, which is associated with spreading depolarization. Uh, the green pictures uh, demonstrate blood volume changes, the darker uh, colors uh, mean higher blood volume and the lower images show uh, hemoglobin oxygenation. Here the more intense red color indicates uh, more oxygenated hemoglobin in the tissue. Uh, these are our latest publications, uh, one of them on uh, uh, imaging and the other one, other one on the impact of aging. As I mentioned in the introduction, we are very interested in this aspect of, of stroke. And this is the research group at present. Uh, we are embedded into the Department of uh, Medical Physics and Informatics and I must tell you it's a very stimulating environment because we have scientists uh, from various disciplines, mathematicians, physicists, biologists, uh, people with medical background, uh, statisticians, and this sort of environment is a very rich soil for new ideas. We have a high number of students and the latest addition is uh, Ray Katod our first year uh, San Georgi student. Uh, she is the last, not because of the chronological order, because, but because of alphabetical order here. Uh, our international network uh, contains a, a group of clinicians and basic scientists called the Cooperative Study on Brain Injury Depolarizations. These uh, people, these research, research groups all over the world investigate spreading depolarizations. Uh, we have close contact with the research group in Oklahoma. 
Uh, they are mostly interested in uh, the aging of the uh, cerebrovascular system and uh, uh, we have an international senior mentor from that lab. And finally, we have uh, some collaboration with a group in Sheffield in the UK and they are interested in uh, more uh, chronic uh, cerebrovascular diseases like Alzheimer's disease. And now I would like to introduce uh, Reka, who is a very diligent, very motivated student, and she is going to talk about pH changes in the brain. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, as the center of the nervous system and the director of the body, the brain plays, plays a crucial part, although it weighs only 2% of the body's whole weight. The incredible capillary system of the brain is also a proof of its importance since the overall length of the capillaries is 600 kilometers long and it provides 20 square meter surface of endothel for a constant nutrient exchange. Besides this basic perfusion, if needed, the uh, blood flow can increase. Uh, the electrical activity of the neurons causes the dilatation of the arteries and uh, it uh, causes uh, an increase in the blood flow, which is called a functional hyperemia. An example for this phenomenon in rats is that if we stimulate the whiskers, that will create a neuronal activity in a given part of the brain and uh, cause a functional hyperemia. The importance of this uh, constant perfusion is that the brain has no metabolic reserves, so a pause of blood supply for 10 seconds uh, can result in loss of consciousness, while a longer pause can end in brain death. According to the last few years, uh, cerebrovascular diseases, including stroke, became the third most frequent cause of death. In the case of ischemic stroke, the primary injury is caused by the obstruct obstruction of the cerebral artery. The age group at highest risk is the elderly people, since the probability, probability of stroke increases with age. Hours or days after the primary injury, a secondary injury can evolve through spreading the polarizations. Cortical spreading depolarization is a weight of a large negative shift in the brain's low electrical potential and it occurs spontaneously after stroke. It is also accompanied by the transient silence of the brain's electrical activity. As this propagates slowly across the gray matter with a speed of 2 to 6 millimeters per minute and they, uh, it spreads mostly through gap junctions between neurons. It has been previously shown that as these in the intact uh, cortex are associated with uh, transient acidosis. And due to this acidosis, the intracellular pH of the cells decreases from 7.1 to 6.9. We also know that stroke itself causes an acidosis due to the metabolites of anaerobic glycolysis that pile up in the cells and in the extracellular space. These are lactate and carbon dioxide. Uh, the change in intracellular pH is from uh, 7.1 to 6.4. It is known of the mechanisms of uh, cerebral pH changes that too low pH causes cellular dysfunction. We also know that both stroke and SDs in physiological uh, tissue are associated with uh, characteristic lactate acidosis. However, the SD related pH changes have not been explored during ischemia. So uh, we suggested that the acidosis caused by the SDs and by the ischemia, they add up and together facilitate a more severe injury of the tissue. Our aim was to determine the SD-related pH changes in the ischemic cerebral cortex. The traditional approach to pH uh, measuring is with a pH-sensitive microelectrode, but this uh, technique has some limitations because we cannot get a resolution in space. This would be really important in the site of elicitation and the direction of propagation is, uh, of SDs is unpredictable. As a solution for this problem, we have uh, uh, developed a multimodal imaging setup for recording intracellular pH changes and changes of the cerebral blood flow. The multimodal imaging setup is based on the co uh, co um, coordinated operation of two CCD cameras, and one of them is uh, completed with an emission filter that allows only the light of the fluorescent dye to pass through. We also have LED lights, one of them emits green light, another emits red light, and also we have a laser diode. Um, the measuring of intracellular pH is based on a pH-sensitive fluorescent dye, and it is called neutral red. We uh, excite the dye with a green light, and it uh, will emit red light. 
we can uh, measure local cerebral blood flow with laser speckle contrast analysis and we can get further information about the circulating blood through their reflectance after elimination. Uh, these representative videos were made to show the changes of the tissue. Here the cerebral cortex of the field of view can be seen. Second uh, figure will represent the changes in cerebral blood flow. And the third figure will show hopefully the uh, changes in uh, intracellular pH. The fluorescence of the pH sensitive dye will increase as the pH will move towards acidic, so low intensity will uh, indicate alkaline pH, while high intensity will show acidic pH. The videos are synchronized, first uh, the fluorescence will change and then with a short delay the appearance of warm colors will uh, show the increase of cerebral blood flow. So, Laser speckle contrast analysis is uh, based on the scattering and interference of light. If we illuminate an uneven surface with coherent laser light, the picture will be characteristically grain because the light will scatter to different directions. Uh, if the picture is still, the places of the black dots will not change, but if the moving particles, the blood cells move, also the uh, pattern of the black dots in those places will change and it will cause a low contrast but blurry picture the still parts of the picture will have higher contrast. Later on, mathematically, we can calculate the velocity of blood flow from the extent of the blur, and we can create a flow map. Cerebral blood volume can be measured by its uh, absorbance of green light. So if there's a large amount of blood in the brain, it absorbs more light and it will cause a smaller reflection of light. And also with the light of the red light, we can measure how much oxygen the blood delivers to the brain because the oxygenated hemoglobin absorbs more light that will cause smaller reflection and smaller intensity of light seen in the pictures. Our experiments were performed on male young adults, break dolly rats under Anastasia Bedis of Florian. Their blood pressure was monitored uh, via the uh, during the procedure with a cannula in the left femoral artery. After the preparation of a closed cranial window, we elicited the SDs with uh, potassium chloride. After 10 minutes of baseline recording, we elicited three SDs. Then we created a transient ischemia with the occlusion of the common carotid arteries on both sides. During ischemia, we elicited three more SDs, then we canceled the occlusion and started the reperfusion of the brain. During the reperfusion, we elicited three more SDs. Uh, this representative recording shows full registrations of uh, direct current potential, also changes in uh, intracellular pH and changes of uh, cerebral blood flow. The Remarkable acidosis associated with the elicitation of SDs is uh, uh, observable. Also, we can see that there is a change in the dynamics of pH changes during ischemia. Our major findings regarding um, SD associated changes in intracellular pH is that while in the physiological brain, the acidosis after SDs is short duration and followed by an alkalosis, in the ischemic brain, the acidosis is uh, longer duration and it's not followed by alkalosis. Statistics also showed that the amplitudes of uh, pH changes were greater during ischemia. Regarding uh, changes of the cerebral blood flow, we can say that the SD associated functional hyperemia is minor during ischemia. The amplitudes of the hyperemia are smaller, but the duration of the half amplitude of the hyperemia was found to be larger uh, during ischemia than in the intact brain. As a summary, we can say that during ischemia, as these are followed by exaggerated intracellular acidosis and a moderated hemodynamic response. The significantly increased acidosis of the tissue with a concomitant moderate hemodynamic response might be responsible for the deepening uh, of the injury after the SDs. Our future plans include uh, the experiments in uh, all the rats to see how age has an influence of the pH changes. I would like to thank my uh, mentor, Dr. Esther Farkas, and also everyone working in the laboratory for their constant uh, help and uh, support, and thank you for the attention.